Hi, Sal Fredo Cervantes. It is 4th of July. Happy 4th of July to everyone. Make sure everyone stays safe out there. But guess what? This is The Breaks. And these are The Breaks. These are The Breaks. You know what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to These Are The Breaks, and guess what? It is 4th of July today. You guys might be thinking like, well, Fredo, what the hell are you doing? Why are you not out there? Hey, it's 12 o'clock, all right? It's 12 p.m. Fireworks don't start till later on this evening. And even though there is going to be some fireworks in Los Angeles, Dodger Stadium uh, will be hosting that and having some amazing fireworks out there, Dodgers and the Pirates at Dodger Stadium tonight, but... It was free agents weekend for the NBA. And it was a very interesting free agency. And not just for all 29 teams, but there was one specific team. Yes, you might see it right on my chest, right here. I'm actually wearing it um, nice and proud, but for a lot of reasons. And a lot of times you can just see the genius of Rob Palenka and what he is doing with what he got, because a lot of people always want to say, and I've, you know, believe it or not, I've been behind Rob Palenka since day one, since he got here. I've been behind him with all his moves he's done, uh, bringing in uh, Russell Westbrook early on, and you know the moves he's done. It's a lot of people give him some crap, but guess what? People are giving him now. They're giving him his flowers, a nice rose, a nice bouquet of flowers, and guess what? Rob Palenka said, Rui Hachimura. You ain't going nowhere. Boom. Austin Reeves, you ain't going nowhere. Boom. Who else is here? Uh, D'Angelo Russell, you ain't Boom. going nowhere. And guess what? He was like, let's let's open up the house. Let's have an open house for it. Hey, why not Gabe Vincent, who was in the WNBA, not WNBA, NBA Finals, uh, for the Miami Heat. Woohoo! Gabe Vincent's a pretty good guard. I'm going to talk a little bit more about him. But another guy who I love this guy. A lot of people might be like, well, who the hell is Jackson Hayes? You know who Jackson Hayes is? He is one of the most, he reminds me of like Tyson Chandler. He reminds me of that type of player. Like Jackson Hayes, I've seen a lot of Jackson in New Orleans since he got to New Orleans. Why? Because I was always watching every move Lonzo Ball did. And when Lonzo Ball got to the New Orleans Pelicans, that was his center next to Zion Williamson. So this Jackson Hayes, he's, a very, he's, an, he's athletic. He's about seven feet tall. He can shoot the mid-range shot, just a typical mid-range, the 10, 15-footer, not too much in that. But he's a great free-throw shooter as well. And he can block, dunk, run the lane. Um, he's like a much uh, smarter JaVale McGee, <laughs> if I want to put it for you guys like that. He's a much better JaVale McGee. So he is a very interesting player that the Lakers were able to sneak out because I can see Hayes being a starter because, yes, Darvin Ham and the Lakers want to go ahead and put AD where he's more comfortable at, at the fourth spot. So they got to get that fifth spot sec uh, secured down there. And Jackson Hayes, he can play those minutes. He can give you 36 to 40 minutes a night if, if, if needed. So that's one guy that I really like to pick. But another pick that I really didn't see this coming. Nobody else saw it coming, but Rich Paul from Clutch Sports saw this coming because his, um, his guy, Cam Reddish, is now a Los Angeles Laker. Yes, a former Duke, a former Nick, a former Atlanta, and now a Laker. Yeah, I mean, Ken was uh, making his round trip around the NBA in his first two seasons, but he is a very good addition to the bench. Yes, we are not looking at Ken Reddish to possibly be a star in this league or a star in this team because he's that was what he clearly was in college. But coming into the NBA, you know, everyone's roles always change. But look at Austin Reeves. This man had 60 other players get drafted in front of him. 60 others. I guarantee you 80% of those are not even getting the amount of minutes that Austin Reeves is getting. And let alone not the money. Because Austin Reeves, he was like, you know what? I'm not going to chase the bag like a lot of these Young players want to do, oh, you know what? I want to secure my life. I would, yes, I understand you want to secure your life, but 
Is $48 million not enough compared to $90 million? Yeah, I know the math. Yes, I'm pretty smart. I can I know the difference that 90 million is a lot more than 48 million. But 48 million is a lot of money to give away and to go walk away from LeBron James, the greatest basketball player on this earth. You are going to take a couple extra million dollars to go play for maybe the Detroit Pistons who you might win 15 games all year long, don't really know who your coach is, have teammates playing for themselves out there, not really playing for a team because a team like Detroit, a team like Orlando, who were both involved involved in possibly making a deal for Austin Reeves, they're not that type of team that's going to really uh, elevate his play on the court. He, Austin Reeves, you know, if you let Austin Reeves run out there for the Magic, he might be out there busting some magic for you guys, but he's not going to be out there being the leader and maybe taking you guys to the playoffs because I guarantee you, you put Austin Reeves with the Orlando Magic, they are not making the playoffs. You put Austin Reeves, you keep him with the Lakers, the same team they had, oh, they might make the NBA Finals because I was just thinking, I was just thinking, as a former Laker fan, I'm like, you know what? The Lakers might actually have a chance because you see the additions they got this team uh, this year with this team. That you see what their focus was is keeping this team together, not tearing it apart. That's something that Rob Palinka has been doing for the past few seasons. After the season ends, he's like, you know what? You, you, you out, you, you in. And sometimes the pieces just don't fit. This year, it just might fit. And, yeah, people want to be like, whoa, hey, don't forget about Denver. Didn't they just win the championship? Yeah, they just won the championship. They won. They beat the Lakers. They swept them 4 to nothing in the Western Conference Finals. But guess what? There were some little pieces there and there that, you know, had to fall in Denver's way in order for them to win this championship. And I'm not taking nothing away from their championship. Congratulations to Denver, Colorado, and everyone in Colorado who is a Denver Nugget fan. Congratulations on that first championship. Bruce Brown, a key player for the Denver Nuggets. Guess what he did? He did the opposite of Austin Reeves. He should have been smart enough to be like, hey, you know what? My team really, we got something good here. We really got something good here. Why not stay here and compete for another title? He was like, no, I'm going to go. Chase the bag, like a lot of the young guys want to say. He chased it all right. <laughs> I mean, believe it or not, uh, he ended up getting two years, $45 million. For Bruce Brown? I mean, this is the re- most ugliest contract that any player can take. I mean, are the Indiana Pacers not all up here? Like, I want to know what Indiana's process was. Like, hey... Bruce Brown is available. This offer him of uh, $22 million a year. Like $22 million for a Bruce Brown. Do you realize what Russell Westbrook just did? Russell Westbrook took $4 million a year to stay at home and here with the Clippers. There are certain players that know that, hey, it's not all about the money. Like when you're young, You think it's all about the money. It's all about the money because money is going to make me happy. No. You might have $20 million in your bank account, but sitting down in Detroit in your hotel, in your house, and thinking like, what the hell am I doing in Detroit? You might might have a little less money, but you might want to be in L.A. You might want to be in New York, in Miami, you know, Golden State or whatnot. But there are better decisions out there than just – about money and that's you know that goes for bruce brown because bruce brown ain't gonna be that same dude in indiana he ain't gonna be doing that thing but there are a lot more players that did some more changes there are some dramatic contracts that we'll be talking about when we return here on these are the breaks United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Bop, bop, bop. 
A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. Yeah, buddy. These are the breaks, my Alfredo Cervantes, and of course, right now, subscribe. If you're watching right now, I understand it's 4th of July, but take a second and subscribe. Just hit the button right there. It's literally right there, right in front of you. Hit the subscribe button because we're bringing you all of the latest content from everywhere, all around the sports here, all right? So make sure everyone stay tuned in. But man, oh man, has NBA free agency been crazy? And yes, there is one crazy player I do want to talk about. And I'm going to highlight him right on my sheet of paper. Kyrie Irving. Yes, Kyrie Irving. We all know what type of player he is. I'm I'm not going to stay here and talk about what he could and cannot do because we all clearly know what he's capable of doing. But there are certain things that we know that, you know, he's capable of doing off the court. And those off the court issues at times might be something that, you know, L.A. Um, might like because last two days ago, if we, if we think about this, two days ago on Sunday afternoon, Kyrie Irving made an appearance at the Drew League here in Los Angeles. He came down to the Drew League for the second time this season. He came down after he signed a three-year contract worth about, oh, man, how much money did this man? He signed a four-year contract. Four-year contract, and it is sometimes a little ridiculous when you are Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban, you are the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, and not just the Dallas Mavericks, but you are the owner of a lot of other successful companies throughout the world. Main reason why you are a billionaire. But you should be smart enough, and you might not want to look like the dumb guy and be like, well, I don't want to let my guy walk away for nothing then you should have traded him when you had the opportunity to do so. Don't sign a player that does not fit with your team. Like, you got to look at your star. You look at the star that you already had in Luka Dantich. Luka clearly knows that they don't fit together. They just don't fit together. Clearly they don't. And you just did not want to look dumb and have your guy walk away and you end up signing him to a ridiculous contract. Bye-bye. And now Luca out there is, you know, maybe not so happy because when Kyrie Irving came along to the Dallas Mavericks in the second part of the season, they were in content. They were right there, right at the top at the fourth seat, trying to make a late push to the playoffs. And guess what happened? They dropped all the way down to the bottom 11th seed in the Western Conference. I mean, Mark Cuban, you're smarter than I am. You saw that happen in front of you. What makes you think that you can do things differently? I mean, did Jason Kidd all of a sudden just realize, oh, I effed up. I got a better game plan. Let's go this way. Let's do this. Maybe. Jason Kidd's a smart guy. Very smart. One of the best point guards we've ever seen out there on the floor. But... I don't know. I don't think that's going to work. So thankfully, thankfully, Kyrie did not make his way to L.A. because it could have ruined the chemistry, the numbers. You see the players that the Lakers were able to pick up. I mean, you look at Rui, D'Angelo, and Austin Reeves, and even Ken Reddish. Those guys I just named were not going to be Lakers if Kyrie was going to be a Laker. So at the same time, 
you look at the possibility that Kyrie was looking into taking a meeting with the Phoenix Suns. Just imagine that. If something crazy would have happened there, oh, Lord Jesus almighty. I, I, I would have just shut the M- NBA down. It's like there's no point to have an NBA season. Like the Phoenix Suns are going to win it if Kyrie were to join. I'm going to get to the Phoenix Suns shortly, but Mark Cuban, I swear, man, I, 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 I wish you nothing but the best in this upcoming season or seasons because Kyrie's going to be there for a while. But Luka Doncic might want out at the end of this year. I can see that. I can clearly see Luka be like, you know what? This is a mess. I don't want to be here. I, I just don't want to be here. And that might be a situation. It might be an ugly situation in Dallas. Now, my team can care less. But let's talk about <laughs> um, the Phoenix Suns. You know, I just talked about the Phoenix Suns right now and seeing with the new addition of Bradley Beal, you see DeAndre Aiden still being there, and you have Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. They got good quality players, but the Phoenix Suns need a little bit more shooting on the outside, and guess what they just did? They got a shooter. They got Eric Gordon, who I was, I, you know, I'm a fan of Eric Gordon. He's been around the league for almost 15 years now, and he's been a very consistent three-point shooter throughout his career. And, you know, he was with the Clippers last year, and, you know, he ended up walking to the Suns. I wish, you know, maybe Rob didn't have enough money because he spent all the money. He's like, I, I ain't got nothing else to offer besides maybe a bag of Skittles and a bag of Doritos. And, you know, Eric Gordon said, nah, no, thank you. I'll go play with KD for at least $2 million. And that's exactly what he did out there. So um, Phoenix got something very good. But what can they do with the new coach? Like, that's what it's all going to be. And guess who their new coach is? Former Laker, Frank Vogel. This man right here that's the reason why I'm wearing this T-shirt. You know, Frank Vogel was the head coach in 2020 when the Lakers won the championship. But Frank Vogel, I do believe in his leadership because he is a leader. He does. He's very outspoken. He really He's, he's a yowler, you know. He, there are certain coaches that don't look like they're yowlers, but this guy yells a lot. And if he was able to put whatever he did in year one with the Lakers, with the roster he had, I'm pretty sure that he's going to be able to do the same thing with the Phoenix Suns. I mean, if I want to compare the 2020 Lakers to the 2023 Phoenix Suns, I think the Phoenix Suns are a lot better than the 2020 Lakers only for the fact that Kevin Durant is there, Devin Booker is there, and Bradley Beal is there. Those three are pretty scary. And you throw in DeAndre Aiden in there and still doing his thing. And some of the other key pieces that, you know, Phoenix was able to bring along because they did uh, get an opportunity to bring some clutch players out there. And hopefully, hopefully Phoenix puts something together. But I really think that Phoenix is going to be trouble this upcoming year. Phoenix might be the team that everyone got to look out for because Denver, I think Denver's going to fall apart. Um, not fall apart completely, but they're just, their motivation is not going to be there because when you win a championship, it's like that that motivation, that effort that you kept putting every single day in practice, every single day in the games um, to try to win a championship. And once you win the championship, you're like, oh, all right, well, I mean, what else can I do? I already got my money. I got my ring. What else can I do? They're they're gonna feel more relaxed, and I I don't think they're I don't even think they're built to win back to back championships because it's kind of hard in the NBA to do that. It's hard, um, but I think Phoenix is gonna be a team to look out for, and and the Lakers as well. I think the Lakers and Phoenix are gonna be the top two favorites um, heading into the Western Conference this upcoming year because you know clearly we know that in the Eastern Conference we got. Um, we got Miami doing their thing. We got New York's improving a little bit. Milwaukee is still the same team. Philadelphia changing it up a little bit. And as of right now, we still do not know on this. I mean, unless it happened uh, in front of my eyes, but James Harden um, is still available out there. We got to go ahead and uh, take a look at that. But I mean, the Eastern Conference can be pretty interesting for the long run. And if I say the long run, I'm saying for the next five to 10 years. Why am I saying that? I'll tell you when I return here on These Are The Break.
A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. That's right. These are the breaks, myself, Fredo Cervantes. Happy 4th of July again. And make sure after you're done watching this, be safe out there. Do not, I mean, every single time, believe it or not, I mean, everyone maybe goes through this. Um, I'm on social media, whether it's uh, the 4th of July night or four, or the <laughs> July 5th, the following morning, and someone ends up burning their head. Off. Like, guys, be careful out there. Don't try to be a hero or be some sort of dumbass out there with anything like that. So just please watch yourselves. Be careful out there. Be safe. Because there's definitely some fireworks going on in North Carolina, up in Charlotte, because LaMelo Ball, yes, that's right. You know, LaMelo Ball just signed one of the largest contracts that any player has ever signed. He is signing with the Charlotte Hornets five years, 260 million dollars man oh man you know what and shout out to jermaine jackson his manager jj you know i did get a chance to reach out to him on on saturday talk to him about it uh very exciting for him and the family and the team because Lamelo ball if, if some of you guys don't know he has created a huge family with um puma Puma Basketball and LaMelo have co uh, co collaborated so much that they've built so many um, activities for the kids, so many uh, different AAU teams. Um, his foundation is growing. LaMelo is doing some great things up in Charlotte, and it's a little silent because, yeah, you don't really hear things about the Charlotte Hornets, but when you really look into it, you will see all the great things he's doing. And, you know, someone mentioned this to me. Well, hey, is he worth all that money with all them injuries? Good question. Very good question. And I'm here to respond and give you that answer. Because he clearly is worth that type of money. He's clearly worth that money. But we understand that injuries come and go. And we understand that we can't really tell the future about you know, someone getting hurt and whether what's going to happen. But at the current moment, right now, right now, 4th of July, he is safe. He's healthy. He's good to go. He's running out there training every single day, morning to late night, training. He's behind off, even though he's, you know, enjoying himself right now in France. But he is always in good shape when he is healthy. Um, but he is pretty much capable of stepping up his game, especially now entering his fourth season in the NBA after, you know, being drafted third overall by the Charlotte Hornets, you know, with what the Hornets are capable of doing, bringing in Miles Bridges back, Miles Bridges has been the missing piece last year. And in this year, you add in Brandon Miller, which all of you guys know, I've been talking about Brandon Miller for almost since March Madness was going on. He is going to be the steal of the of the draft. Like, clearly, he's going to be the steal. He's going to show everyone um, how, because his build, his body is built like an NBA player already. I mean, he's only 20 years old, and he's already built like an NBA star. 
I mean, he's six seven. 220 pounds, can't take you off the dribble, could rebound. Um, I think Brandon Miller's, um, the only thing that I feel like he cannot do or not not do well is passing. But guess what LaMelo does? Great passing the ball. And Brandon Miller likes to play off the ball. He's not a guy that likes the ball in his hands because I clearly saw that in March Madness when they were playing for the, for the tournament that – when it comes down to the wire and teammates are just like, well, I don't want the ball. I don't want the ball. They'll give it to Brandon. Give it to Brandon. And Brandon at times, he's like, damn, I got to go at it again. And it feels like when you're the handler and you're not really much used to that, you're not going to be able to do that much. But hopefully LaMelo and Brandon Miller are the next future for the Eastern Conference because I can see them clearly. And even though, even though Brandon Miller, I still think you're crazy, bro. I think you're crazy. You said, hey, me and LaMelo are going to be in the NBA Finals this upcoming year. I think you're crazy. I think you're crazy. But, hey, who knows? Magic Johnson was in the Finals as a rookie. I mean, anything could happen, right? Anything could happen. And I mean, one thing that did happen, this, this is kind of ridiculous. I'm going to run through this before we get going here because it's 4th of July. And, you know, and I want to take a break on the breaks. So, Anthony Edwards, the other guy that got drafted number one overall just next to LaMelo Ball as well, got the same identical contract, five years, 260, which it kind of clearly shows you that they're both the same quality of players. We look at Fred, uh, Fred Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet left Canada. He's like, no more Canada. Oh, Canada. See you later. Houston, here I come. He's coming over to Houston. So... He came, he chased the bag. He also chased the bag. He's like, I'm going to go pick up my, my bag, tax-free money from Texas, and he's going up to Texas. But guess who followed him to Texas? Guess who followed him to Texas? The biggest clown of 2023. You guys already know who the clown is. Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks ended up getting a contract with the Houston Rockets for <laughs> years, $80 million. I... I mean, when, when I saw that he got four years, 80 million, I was like, well, really? I mean, yeah, he can somewhat knock down the shot when, you know, it's not in his head, when he's not in his head or the city of Los Angeles gets in his head um, or LeBron James got in his head. But is he worth 20 million a year? I think so. I think that's um, Houston overpaid. I think that, you know, the one that really needs to get a paycheck and deserves all the credit for this is Dylan Brooks' agent. I mean, I'm pretty sure Dylan Brooks' agent, um, I mean, the Houston Rockets are not that good. They're not. They're at the bottom of the league right now. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure he, had, the agent attempted to call, hey, uh, Milwaukee, are you interested in Dylan? Uh, no, no, thank you. Hey, hey, Brooklyn, you interested in Dylan? No, thank you. Um, hey, Golden State, do you want Dylan? No, thank you. Hey, LA, Lakers, you guys want Dylan Brooks? No, thanks. I'm pretty sure his agent was on the phone with every team. But it maybe landed to, I mean, a team that really doesn't know how to run things down in Houston. And they offered him $80 million. They're like, here, kid, here's $80 million. Come play for us. We need, some, we need some people out here. And it's like, it's a mess down there. It's like, come on, man. It's like, Houston, you definitely got a problem now. You got a huge, huge problem right there. But I do want to shout out to other people who kind of didn't chase the bag. They didn't really chase something they really wanted to because these two guys had the opportunity to chase whatever they wanted. These two guys were wanted by every single team in, in the NBA. Draymond Green stood in Golden State four years, $100 million. He's getting his, his paycheck, staying with his team. Jordan Poole is no longer there. Um, and another guy who ended up kind of staying calm, staying with his team. He's like, I'm, I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my money, but I'm gonna stay here and build something here. And that's former Laker Kyle Kuzma, who got a four-year deal worth 102 million dollars. Boom! So congratulations to Kyle Kuzma because at one point there was uh, some speculation out there that Kyle might want to make his way back to Lakerland, and I'm like, I'm open, I'm open, I'll consider that. Why not? No, it's Kyle Kuzma. He's, he, he, he's mature now. He's more of a leader than he was back then. But why not, guys? And you know what? I'm done with the breaks because I'm done talking about every single player that got paid. All right? So I will see you guys next Monday night. All right? Catch me on Monday night or you know what? catch me tomorrow. Catch me tomorrow um, at the LA Sparks game. All right? Wednesday night. We'll be live from the crypto. Let's go.